morning, everybody. Uh, give me a second. I have this. Okay. Have you do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Great. So, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Stavros Shailis. I used to be in Plymouth a uh, few years ago. And now I'm in the University of Portsmouth, where I am associate professor in cybersecurity. Uh, I'm dealing with many things on cybersecurity. One of them is this insider threats detection, but generally I have a broad scope on cybersecurity. I will say my specialty, what is I am um, dealing mostly in cybersecurity is intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, and generally I'm trying to apply everywhere, uh, machine learning, AI now, various algorithms that they are available in AI. And my work, let's say, is to try to improve not so much the already available neural network algorithm, but the fit that I give to the neural network in order the neural network to be able to understand better the input and have better res results. Uh, that's my work on cybersecurity. I'm on various committees, uh, in research committees uh, as a reviewer, in journals, uh, in conferences. I also have, let's say, uh, one uh, co-chairing IEEE CSR, which is uh, an IEEE conference uh, running the last four years, uh, which I'm proud of it because it's a very nice conference and we attract many uh, good people presenting things as well as meter support from US and also we have a lot of support from US. Uh, and that's a few things I'm dealing with uh, as well as consultancy. So uh, today, as the title says here, we're going to see a bit about insider threats. And specifically, okay, we'll start with insider threats. We will define what the literature review says. We will give also our own definition. Uh, we'll go through the various insider threats uh, categories, let's say, of people. And later on, we're going to uh, see what is available in the market, what they try to do to stop this uh, problem, let's say, which is very difficult to be stopped. And what we did, I mean, I will show you a small part of the work we did. Uh, in what we propose basically using uh, machine learning in order to uh, stop this problem. So let's see a little bit of definition. You see here a very happy uh, business environment which they have their Christmas uh, uh, party as Christmas are coming. So one of them or many of them, according to statistics, each company has 20 inside the threats uh, per month. Uh, so the definition of inside the threat is, uh, let's say it's a person uh, which is an employee. It could be an employee as here. It could be a contractor. It could be a partner uh, which they have access inside the organization. So basically they work, they collaborate, as you understand, and they have already access to the organization, already access to the IT systems or the internet of the... Uh, so they already have access to the organization infrastructure and also data. So in this case, uh, we don't have uh, someone outside that is trying to find a hole, uh, a problem in the firewall, on the services to attack, gain access to the uh, systems. So we need to bypass all of these security defenses in order to enter into the corporate environment and affect system steal data or whatever is uh, 
the attacker needs. In this case, we have someone that is bypassing the security perimeter, bypassing ITSs, bypassing firewall, net generation firewall, whatever is available there, okay? And it's inside the environment. So we'll see later on all of these things about inside the threats, but first let's see a bit about what is currently happening, why yeah. this is critical. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, can you mute uh, everybody? So I, I am Stavros, I said that coming in on, on <laughs> mute. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, so some examples, there are many of them, but some uh, examples that happen uh, uh, through the years. We have Tesla, all well known company with Elon, CEO Elon Musk with the cars. Uh, as you can see here, a malicious site is about the system and send data to third parties. The same happened to Apple. Uh, they were somewhere there stealing the new iPhones coming and new plans. They were sent to China. Uh, so that was, let's say, a, a espionage on the, uh, on the corporation, on the next plans of the corporation. Facebook here use a security engineer, use uh, the access that he or she uh, had. Uh, in the Facebook, in the database of Facebook, and he was stalking women. Other example of insider threat. Other one here, we have a malicious insider which is stole personal data, sell them on dark web um, or in other relevant organizations. For uh, so the data that's been stolen from this bug were 1.5 million customers. The money that this is either could receive, it could be in this amount. If it could sell for one pound per customer, you understand that we're talking for 1.5 million uh, amount of money that he or she received. There are more examples and more recent examples that are happening to 22, in July 22. One was from General Electrics, uh, which they have stolen 8,000 sensitive files. Uh, other one was in uh, we had one million of missed deadlines. Uh, basically, the problem that it was happened to Georgia Pacific from a paper manufacturer. One of former employees locked in using uh, his still valid credential. He was uh, uh, dismissed, fired, or uh, move away to another company. But he connect with his own credentials remotely, uh, and he's installed his own software in the company, could be ransomware, could be any kind of software, and which this cost one million of uh, miss uh, deadlines uh, from for this malicious activity that happened. So there are some examples, there are many, we can discuss two hours about examples and we will not finish. So you understand how critical is the insider in a company. Uh, and uh, I'll show you some more numbers here to understand. <clears throat> Over the last two years, uh, we have uh, here an increase of 47.%. Uh, we have more than 35% of business around the globe that are affected by insider threat yearly and also what i was reading uh, in the last days uh, before i do this presentation uh, there is 60 uh, percent of the companies have more than 20 insider threats every year okay so this is from the statistics more statistics uh, about the the cost that they they the cost uh, is predicted in 2023, that is 8.76 million globally. These statistics, uh, they change based on the measures that they have. We'll see them later about the CM. They said that if you have a CM 
this cost is reduced to 6.3 million. Uh, if you have this, it's reduced to 4 million. If you have the other, so all of these countermeasures, they can help reduce, let's say, this, uh, this cost. But however, uh, you cannot, uh, most of the organizations, they find it very, very difficult to deal with cyber threats. And also they admit like 30%, 40% of the organization, they agree that is something that they cannot easily tackle or it could never be tackled in their company. Okay, so it's a big problem. So the importance of the side threats from the previous uh, slides I show, as you can understand, that is costly. Okay, so you have costly damages. You have hidden threats. Okay, as the example of the General Electric's employee. Uh, you have reputation harm like the example I gave with the Asian Pacific or the Facebook with stalking women, etc., or the Pacific, if they lose their deadlines, that will create reputation harm to the company. That means losing clients. Losing clients means losing money. So we go back to the cost of damage. So what is important here is the last two uh, things to see the early warning signs and you have some proactive uh, prevention. Now, the early warning signs, uh, there's a lot of research on these early warning signs. It could be from psychological profiles. Okay, so you put psychology. Now, how this is uh, appropriate with GDPR and all of these regulations and law, that's a good question. Uh, but uh, you can use the behavior in the company, maybe the manager. Uh, you, you can see some suspicious behavior uh, happening for a person. Other things you can see is through the technology, AI, which I will explain later with the work we did. And the other one is to do proactive prevention. I think this is the most important because the proactive in, uh, prevention is related with early warning signs as well. And if you act proactively, you can stop this problem because normally you understand the problem with the side threat after it happens, after all of these uh, security issues uh, happen and all of this financial damage happen. So this is the most important thing, the proactive prevention. The awareness enable, etc. This is something for all the stuff enabled to spot the early signs. Uh, but I mostly believe in technology myself. So you need to use the technology, cameras, whatever, in order to spot these early on signs. So common characteristics of insider threats who have uh, in the systems unusual system activity uh, for example fail logins out of hours uh, remote login trying to access uh, share folders or data that is not on his or her privilege uh, who can see unauthorized access uh, to other accounts, for example, try to switching from his user account to administrator, for example. Uh, another thing is policy violations. Uh, for example, there are security protocols uh, that they don't allow you to visit uh, XY uh, website. He may be using VPN in order to access this website with virus, let's say. So we have uh, here various categories of uh, inside the threats. So I will go through all of these categories. We have the malicious insiders, 
which uh, these are intentionally still damaged or exposed as the corporate data systems. Uh, the reason that this happened with this Malaysia insider, there are many reasons. It's one is the financial, other could be ideological, or there could be some personal motivations. For example, uh, I don't feel value in the company. Uh, they don't give me the salary that they deserve. Um, many, many uh, examples that they can lead someone's brain to change from good willing to malicious behavior. Or they could be uh, like the movies. Uh, for example, uh, force to do something for various reasons. Not big. For example, it could be like the movie Firewall, if you have seen it, with uh, Kevin Costner, which they get his family and they were blackmail him to put the Trojan horse in the company to bypass the backing system to enter in. It could happen. Everything is possible in cybersecurity. It's not something that is only in the movies. Okay. I see many things happening in the movies, which they are reality in cybersecurity. So that's the malicious actual insider. Now we have the inadvertent insider, which are employees who is who unintentionally cause harm. For example, uh, you are sitting on the computer, uh, and now which is very trendy is the ransomware. So you receive an Excel file. Basically, you are in the accounts. Your daily work it has to do with emails. So you receive uh, offers from various companies, invoices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you receive one email, for example, from. Uh, XYZ company, which you receive every day from this company, invoices in Excel format or PDF format. Uh, the email is legit, so it's actually from the person that's sending you the email, and the attachment is actual, as usual, attachment that you receive from this company, and you open this PDF or Excel, and suddenly everything is blacked out because that PDF was a malicious PDF and it was a ransomware code attached on it and you affect all the company with ransomware, which means it's a little procedure after that. So that's something that it was by negligence, by uh, security policies that didn't apply correctly to stop the ransomware, but it was not intended. Okay, uh, it was the daily job. And this is what I'm saying, this example happened many times and I know companies that they had it. It was in the daily job. Uh, so not good security uh, policies were applied. So that's the reason this happened. Okay, of the ransomware spread and not stay only in the specific machine. So we cannot, that, that's an insider as well, but we cannot blame this person in reality. Third, part, third party insiders. As you understand, many companies, as you know, basically they use external partners or contractors. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Nathan, it's one hour, isn't it? Because I need to count my time as well. Yes, please. Okay, because I have 47 slides. Mm -hmm. uh, We've got until half past 12, Stavros, but usually we leave the last kind of 20 minutes for Q&A. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I will try to, to be on time. So the third party insiders, they are contractors, uh, external collaborators, many companies they use, especially for consultancy, they use uh, contractors and they pay them very good to do uh, some job. Uh, so they have access these contracts to this company uh, personal data and you never know if they will even if they sign an NDA or 
all of these documents needed, uh, you don't know if they could act either as malicious or the second or the previous option, which was intentionally by careless mistake and the leaked data, okay? Such examples could be a pen tester, which uh, was paid, has access to the company's information, around the pen tester and forgot to close a door that it was used to access the system. Nobody knows who is going to use this door later to access the system and what it could be implemented inside all of these systems. I said the trend now is ransomware because a lot of money are behind that. When I say a lot, a lot. Uh, other things, other category, let's say, we have the departing employees, like the example of General Electric. Uh, these employees, normally, when you an employee is leaving a company, you need to follow a procedure. There should be procedures. Uh, for example, you provide all of your access uh, cards immediately before you leave the company. Before you leave, so you go to the HR, you give everything that it gives you, you physical access to the company, and also you'll be escorted by the security of the company in order to know if you're not having anything or you're going to put any USB stick on from your last day on a computer. Other things they should change immediately when you get the, I'm leaving now this day, uh, or your accounts should be terminated or your logins, remote logins, whatever system you're using, whatever permission, everything should be removed. Uh, Departing employees, unfortunately, uh, there are many frameworks and many uh, guidance uh, available. Uh, however, most of the companies, they don't follow all of these guidance. And as an example, and big companies, not only small companies, small companies, I will say is, is more fluidy all the procedure. But even big companies, uh, they don't follow correct procedures, and that's the reason we ended up into having access, even after six months that they change a job, having access to their previous job, to the job's clients, which can be used to transfer in another company and the previous company lose sales. Disgruntled uh, employees, I would say it's a category uh, that can fit the first two. So even if we have so many categories, uh, small categories, all of them fell, let's say, to the malicious insider or unintentionally uh, insider. Okay. So this category, I will consider it one of the important categories that could possibly, like a percentage of 99%, could cause uh, harm, okay? Because if someone stays in a company but is not satisfied, if you had the right opportunity to do the harm, he will do it. So, potential risks from all of these employees types and all of these malicious and non-malicious intellectual property thief, data breach, leakage of important data, financial frauds, okay? Sabotage, examples I gave with General Electrics, or espionage, spying for competitors, transfer competitors to the other company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what can we do uh, to stop this uh, this problem? There is four main important things, which one is employee screening. That's, I think, it's the, the first and most important thing that happened with HR. So before you hire someone, you do a throwful background checks on all the person that you're applying to shortlist before you 
short list them. I will say for at least for the short list, not for all of them, because it's a lot of data and a lot of work. But at least for the short list of employees, before they go to the interview, you need to do a good uh, screening. This screening, if your HR is not able to do it, uh, it will have also things like social media accounts. Uh, basically, try to retrieve as much information as possible online, okay? To have a first uh, know about the person. The second thing is after the hiring, uh, I will say they should go through a second screening and that will, uh, except of the reference and all of these things that you will receive from people, uh, appropriate for the specific person, I will say it will be better also based on the CV to see the working experience, etc., and ask references that it could be, uh, it could not be provided from the employee. Ask people that he was working there, etc. Now, all of this needs a lot of investigation, but that's the best way in order to be sure what you who you hire is the best. Of course, you will tell me that isn't that uh, kind of violating GDPR and many other things. Uh, yes, but if you go to have a job in the military or police, etc., they don't ask you to go all of, from all of this check and have security clearance. This is something that the company should should have, but no in so strict, uh, let's say, uh, like the military and like the police they need in order to work with them. But it should be uh, the, um, the right screening. Other one is access controls to the credentials, the strict access policies, as the example I gave you with the daily job and the ransomware. If the policies they were correct, for example, if you see uh, a lot of changes of files happen in the system, then for example, you shut down the internet in this system automatically, or you shut down the system in order not all the disk to be encrypted. So some access control policies could be applied, programs also could be running in order to prevent uh, all of this accidental or in, uh, intended uh, malicious activity on a computer. Very important thing, other it's training. So you provide a regular security awareness program to your personnel, uh, showing the damages, showing many things, the legal framework, what could happen in a company. And last but not least is proactive monitoring with various detection systems. So basically, you need a multi-layer approach for detecting and stop inside the threats. So uh, other things that happen from the cyber threats, except for the financial uh, losses and after they leak all of this data, etc., could be brand reputation, legal consequences, all of this, uh, all of these things here is an extra uh, financial loss for a company after an incident happened because they lose already money, but they need to see the legal consequences who they will sue them for the data. For example, NHS here, they, some data were stolen. These will be some legal losses. Uh, they will be people uh, asking for their money. I hear cases that they get like 10,000 for their data uh, leaked from companies. Other is the morale and the culture in employee trust. If they leak data about employees, this is happening inside the company. They don't feel safe anymore. Operation disruptions. Um, okay. Uh, 
other things yes this sorry is the same i should delete it i did it so strategies for detection technology uh, nowadays it's uh, very good and it helps us do many things anomaly detection it's a good start let's say uh, to detect some anomaly in the network that could be malware or could be accessing to websites that they shouldn't be accessed in the working hours for example it could be job seeking websites user activity monitor that's one of the most important things and uh, user activity like the website i mentioned before that could be an indicator of something uh, happening someone wants to move on to a different company data loss prevention dlp uh, programs uh, that's very good programs there are some companies uh, doing great job uh, one of them is microsoft uh, introduced some D dlp uh, systems uh, but uh, generally we need more better systems other initial response planning is a response uh, it should be in every company for everything it's a very important part of cyber security you should have a plan if this happened what you do you should have uh, steps that they should be followed in order to be more productive and more um, able to uh, stop uh, an unwanted situation. Things available, uh, systems available, one of them, it's CM. If you have it here, the CM uh, acronym is the Security Information and Event Management uh, System. So this is the system is uh, it's a system that is capable um, and collect logs from various different systems, and uh, you can have uh, a variety of logs uh, inside this uh, system. Uh, also. Uh, it can have search capabilities, it can have real-time uh, event reporting, analytics, uh, when it says user activity, etc. all of this coming from logs or uh, agents running across the devices. I have seen some pretty good CMs. One example is Splunk, you can see it later on. And also lately, which I'm dealing with the last uh, month with a new uh, European grant submission, uh, we was going through the cloud and CM systems available. And I found one system which I was really impressed, uh, which was also open source. Uh, I didn't check, to be honest, if the system had this component as open source, which I will explain now, but I saw in a CM a ChatGPT implementation. If you are aware about ChatGPT and all of these nice things ChatGPT is doing with the uh, AI, so basically what was happening with this system? It was it has a ChatGPT, not the actual, their own one implemented because the GPT. Uh, algorithm is well known so they implement this algorithm in the log files and if you see some things happening in your network through this dashboard etc you could able to make a query to the gtb so can you please explain me what is happening now in my system and it was taking your query going through the log files available in the system it was providing to you a summary what is currently happening in your network? For example, it will say that I notice in computer this and this and this, that they are in the floor, this and this, and uh, an abnormal activity. I see these services being installed, these new services, etc. So it was pretty cool, I will say, and very interesting. And that's what the system, that's where AI 
can be be very uh, meaningful and many very helpful to the sysadmins. So CEM it's very good systems. There are many CEM vectors. There is Logrith, Splunk, uh, IBM. Splunk, uh, by the way, has been acquired now with from Cisco. The last uh, month uh, is being acquired by Cisco for some billions. Very nice system if you have used it, uh, but it's very expensive as well. So there are many big players uh, here in this. But again, I think there is opportunity for uh, for more, especially uh, this that I told you, this example that I provide you uh, with the AI. Yeah. So some analysis quick about the top players. We have the IBM Curander. Uh, weakness is very costly. Splunk, complex and conf to configure and deploy. But after it's running, is good. And also it's expensive, very expensive. Uh, HP Arc, uh, complex to deploy, but they have all of these strengths. Okay. For me, logs are very important to have good logging and correlate these logs, these events that you, re sorry, you, repeat, you, re you retrieve from many, many machines. Uh, that's very important. So some, to get an idea about this blank, uh, the license cost is 1 million perfectualized to analyze one terabyte per day. The annual cost is $250,000. Service and training is $75,000. The total is 1.3, let's say, million for first year. So it's a budget. It's not for everybody. So some recommendations, if you want to use Splunk and you have this budget, you choose Splunk and the price. It has all of these extra things, but there are some nice solutions, open source solutions, which they are pretty good if you don't have the budget. I'm not going to do go to the open source solutions, uh, but if you want, we can do another one and see what is available with open source. Other things uh, that you can uh, use is identity access management systems, uh, which basically they centrally manage and uh, the access, the groups, the privileges, and basically where each employee has access. Okay. And the policy and everything is being uh, defined by the governments. And then it's implemented by the IT uh, team. Sometimes, to be honest, these people here in the high governments, they don't get an idea. They don't understand what is the importance of cybersecurity. They understand it after the event happened. Some systems available, it's Dell Quest software, IBM has some systems, uh, Microsoft has, you know, the Office 365, uh, all of this platform is uh, identity management systems, we have Fisher, Deeply, in general, there are many available big players. One example is Oracle, just to get the, the costing, as you can see, the first year is 2.85 million for first year. We did work here on identity management systems. We have published some papers uh, and some proposals with AI and fuzzy for identity management systems. Uh, to be honest, I didn't have the, the chance to work on, to compare, let's say, these commercial systems with some open source, but that could be another nice work that can be done. So uh, this could be some strategies from prevention and from for response. I will say the best is to have some plan, uh, disaster recovery plan, that it will have your response in case of an insider threat. And it should be have an incident response team. It should be uh, legal and coordinate things with HR. You, you should be provide training in order 
for after this incident happened uh, and give examples uh, for the procedure that they will follow. And sometimes, if people know what they will follow, if they do damage, they may, may be, it can prevent them from doing uh, such things. Uh, I will skip this now and I will move because we have 20 minutes to our proposed solution. So after we see all of these things happening, etc., we said, okay, that's interesting, but all of these systems, currently they just correlate things with some code. What if, what if we use artificial intelligence specifically uh, there are many machine learning algorithms, many uh, uh, code on artificial intelligence, and we say, is deep autoencoder or variation autoencoder, which is a variation of autoencoder, the, the deep autoencoder, neural networks, it will be successful for detection of cyber threat malicious activity. Generally, neural networks are very good in identifying images, and they are well used in images. Uh, that was the next work we did. This is the previous work. Uh, so that was our motivation. A little bit about the bot encoder, if you don't have any, I mean, there's a, many maths in, involved, but the easy, let's say, how things work is that you have your input data here, which could be massive, big. The idea of the encoder is to, here is to encode, it says the input data and compress them. Basically you try to reduce the, the data to the important data in order to come into a, a conclusion, let's say, into, uh, to filter this data and have less uh, to find the important data in order to have some meaningful results from the data. So the purpose of the autocoder here is to learn a representation for the data of, of the set of data, typically for purposes of dimensional reduction or feature learning. So all of these things is happening in order from all of this data that you fit, to have what is important from the features in order to have meaningful results, okay? So you, ha you have this triangle reducing data to the meaningful. Now, the variation of the encoder, it works uh, the same, let's say, uh, with the autoencoder. The only difference, it has some stochastic encoder, so it's involved more complex math, maths, in order to do this feature extraction and uh, reduce, let's say, uh, the space in order to have more meaningful results. General, both of them, uh, the variation and the AE, they use something like this. This is the neural network architecture. So you have the data that you fit the network. You have some variables here, some weights. Uh, you have the hidden layers, which th there is a, a back propagation and forward pass process. So it's keep going front and back. Uh, it's doing all of this back and forth in order to eliminate, it's trying to understand which data are more important uh, for our job and what weight I need to uh, change in order to give more relevance to these specific features. So it's doing all of this uh, according to the layers that you provide in order in the end to have a, a final result. Now, how all of these things happen and the math that they be used, et cetera, in the neural networks, it has to do with statistics, okay? And some uh, other things, uh, which there is a lot of maths to explain now. So that was some easy, let's say, explanation of how this uh, variation not to code is being used. So what we did, the proposed solution was, the stage one is to input data, 
uh, and to do some pre-processing is to produce numerical values for the extracted features and then is to uh, the stage three is to implement data classifier using the deep learning models so we have here our data we'll explain about my uh, what data we had and uh, what was uh, basically right here a little bit but i will show it in the next slide as well so we have data for each user we have log files on the computer on the device uh, that is being used. We have network data for the specific computer and user because it was authenticated through a domain controller. So we had the username validated and the access for this specific uh, username, okay, which was at a, it was match with the actual person. So we had this data we pre-process them and then we feed them then in these two different uh, machine learning algorithms now a little bit more about our data set we use the surf uh, institute data set which is uh, very well known uh, about their data set about the cyber threats specifically we use the version 4.2 which has lock on, lock off. We had the device, HTTP, LDAP, and file access. We had also psychometric profiles. However, we didn't uh, use them in this uh, research, uh, but generally I consider psychometric profiles very important to detect uh, insider threats before they happen. So. The data set are free. Anyone can get them to do more research. If you like this uh, subject, you can deal uh, with these data sets. They are very good. They have also other data sets. Uh, this, is, uh, this data set is divided into seven log files. And also, it has a record of user activity, which is covering 18 months. Uh, the data set it was a mix. It says that it's fictional so they they reproduce them themselves but they get some initial data and then they create this data set so it looks pretty realistic i mean it's actual data you can actually collect from uh, from systems uh, the data is free of privacy and restriction limitations so basically uh, that's very important for our research because we cannot have actual names. So everything is fictional and it has 1,000 simulated employees. Some of them, they are malicious. Eight of them basically are malicious. So the idea is to, they provide you also the solution so you know what you're doing. But the idea is to, sorry, is to find the these eight uh, problematic uh, employees. So the file we use was the lock on, the device, the HTTP, the emails, okay, exchange, etc., and uh, this file CSV. Uh, and from this, from all of these files, we got this uh, a CSV with 1,000 entries. We have the date, time, lock on, lock off, connect, disconnect, email. So we have them all in one file. Um, we extract the features we wanted from all of these files, okay? And we put it in one file, which then we fit this file to the uh, machine learning algorithm. In order to fit it first, we need to split our data set into training and testing. Uh, there are very variations about training and testing. You can run 80, 20, you can not run 90, 10, you can run 50, 50. It depends what you want. But the generally the newer networks, just to to be aware, they need a, they need a huge amount of data for training before they are actually being used in order to detect things. And also this training, it's resource hungry. So in my case, I do the training in GPUs. So I have uh, a five uh, 
3080 uh, GTX GPUs with 10,000 cores, CUDA cores, each one. So we use this for training, okay, to train our, our systems in order to be faster. If you try to train on a CPU, it's fine. It, it will be trained, but it will, some examples I had, they did like 15 days, 10 days in order to have good results. Of course, if you fit less data, it will be faster. But in order to have good results, you need a lot of data, okay? And then we run the test with 25%. In our uh, pre-processing, uh, we have the lock on, lock off, and we have specific values. So we try to, um, to make the data to be the same for everything in order the machine to understand them. So we, we use binary zero one. So we normalize basically data. And then we implemented using some resistors and some chips. I'm kidding. Uh, we just use Python uh, and we use the Keras library and TensorFlow, which is very good framework to be used. Uh, we implement all of these. We use uh, an input level 50. Uh, very evolved. That's the encoder has only two height layers. We didn't use more layers. We could use more layers and we could see the results for more layers. But as you add layers, uh, it takes more time, okay? Because you have, you have this in, back, etc., and retrain and relearning all the modem, the, the, all the procedure. So we have, uh, the first really it was with two times the number of inputs. So we have 100 and the second has the same number of inputs. So we have 50, let's say, uh, features added uh, in the first input layer. And the output was this, uh, the 50 results. Uh, the that was the autoencoder, and then the again with the variation again we use Python, Keras, and TensorFlow is available inside the TensorFlow and the Keras library. There, all of this you can use it, and there are many other neural networks algorithms. And specifically for the optimization for the autoencoder, we use the NATAM uh, optimization. Now, all of the, this research about AI and uh, you need to count the accuracy, the prediction, recall, and F1 score. Uh, the, the formula for detection is standard, and this is what is being uh, shown in this uh, slide. What is most important, I will say, for my perspective is the F1 score, which basically show the actual accuracy for detection. And in our results, uh, after we train the model, the A with 30 and the V with 1000 epoch, I mean, means interactions, uh, we use a different batch size uh, of, uh, of data uh, because of the algorithm, how it was, uh, it was behave, I will say better. Uh, we have these results here. So we managed to get an F1 score with the variation or the coder to close to 94% and 92% for the uh, autoencoder, which is not, but it's not perfect. I was expecting something more close to 97, 98%. From nothing is very good, uh, the results that we had. Of course, maybe with more training and more epoch and more hidden layers and a different approach, we could have different results and better results. Uh, but there was a next work to be done. So comparing the the on the code, the variation code with CNN, some references here, and bioinspired models, we have better results. Bioinspired models, I found them very interesting and very 
intrigue, I will say, for research, like ant colony bees and all of this coming from the nature. There are many proposals about this algorithm, but uh, generally we had very good results comparing with them. Now, conclusions. Seems that neural networks, they are good in detecting this kind of attacks. And uh, as I said, we need to see some futures uh, directions for that. And the future direction was, again, with the same data set. Uh, this paper is already published. If you search my name, you will find my papers and you will find the paper. Uh, so we went into the route because we know that neural networks, they are very good with image processing, uh, which they have high accuracy. We thought that, okay, let's see if we can convert this data set, this file that we created and we normalize somehow into a picture showing the importance of each of the uh, of each of these file and these log entries. So another work we did was that, and that work achieved higher results of detection comparing with this method here. So that's pretty much. I have more slides. I prepare backup slides, but I'm not going to go through the backup slide because we exhausted the one hour. Uh, so that's it from me. Questions, I'm happy to answer. Thanks, Stavros. Um, would you mind stop sharing your screen? Yes. Um, uh, DC. Thanks so much for, for the presentation. And um, open the floor for any questions. I've got a related one to start if, if as I anticipate, the audience is a little bit quiet. Stop.